Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 21st, 2017. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It's the Savage Nation, Lou Pate, filling in for Dr. Savage. Happy to be here with Team Savage. Jim is here. Clint is here. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for spending some time here. And we always invite you into the fray here at the Savage Nation, 855-400-SAVAGE. And you can always get your latest headlines at michaelsavage.com. You will not be disappointed. Uh, We'll go over some of those a little later in the show. But Christmas is upon us. Two shopping days left. Just for your chance to pick up a copy of Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller, God, Faith, and Reason. Put God under the Christmas tree this year. Tis the season for God, Faith, and Reason. Well, welcome aboard. We have a lot to get to. You would think that this is a a dead media week, heading into Christmas, heading into New Year's, coming out of Hanukkah. Happy belated Hanukkah to all our friends of the Jewish faith, as a matter of fact. And no, just like everything during the Trump era, never a dull moment. We have the the new tax law that was voted in over the last couple of days. Um, Republicans now taking a victory lap. We're going to play you some of that audio a little later. We're also going to talk to you about the media strategy that the Democrats have cast upon us. And we'll get your opinion on whether it's working or not. You're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe the numbers. And then the U.N., the world has thumbed its nose at the United States. Some tough talk from Nikki Haley and President Trump, basically saying they will take names. All about us putting our embassy in Jerusalem, or the plans to put our embassy in Jerusalem. Why can't we do this? Well, it's not a matter of whether it's a good thing or it's a bad thing. It's a matter of how is this going to affect our relations down the road? We'll we'll go through the numbers of who voted um, which way. You'd be surprised at some of our allies and how they voted. But is the U.N. on the way out? And this tough language from Haley and Trump, is it good? There's just so much there. You wouldn't think that it was just a few days before Christmas, and we're going to bring it all to you. Uh, we also have coming up a little later, racist trees in Palm Springs. I kid you not. The ever, ever, never-ending narrative of the left firing Mueller, even though, um, what's her name, the press secretary, uh, uh, Sarah Sanders, said many times that the president is not going to fire Mueller. But this is going to we'll tie this into the media narrative with the tax plan on how the left does this. And as mentioned, it is Christmas time. But this year, embraced by CNN, embraced by MSNBC, Santa is not only gay, but he's black and he's married. And, you know, can't we just have one tradition that we cannot change? It's not about skin color. It's not about the issues of whether you're gay or not. It's just, it's Christmas. Some characters can't be changed, shouldn't be changed. We'll talk about the innocence of children later when it pertains to all things Santa Claus. But first, it is a victory lap for the GOP. And whether you are for the tax cuts or whether you are against the tax cuts, the earth has not opened up today and swallowed us whole. Sky is not raining balls of fire and the apocalypse is upon us because president has gotten his tax cut as he promised on the campaign but if you listen to the democrats that is what they say but then again that is what they say about everything their reaction to everything is that people will die whether it's net neutrality whether it's repealing obamacare whether it's the tax bill They outright lie that 13 million people will be thrown off health care because of the new tax bill. 
We'll play you audio throughout the show of Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi droning on with the same talking points that I have heard now going back, oh, 17 years or so. Class warfare and Occupy Wall Street talking points that they've just been using over and over and over again. We're also going to play you some audio of uh, Chuck Schumer who really has become a cartoon character. The man needs to step aside. He's, just a, he's basically a New York caricature of what a senator is supposed to be. He, he's just a joke. I mean, my, my family, I grew up in New York, uh, grew up in the Bronx. Uh, I know Schumer's shtick. He shows up at the train station or on a corner every week with his podium, gives the DNC talking points, and then, you know, winds his way through, and then he's gone. And he, but no one's even paying attention to him anymore. No one respects Chuck Schumer. He's on the floor the other day and literally droning on with the same talking points, tweaked for the tax bill this time. And, and people are just talking as if he's not, you know, no respect, you know, no decorum anymore because it's Chuck Schumer. We know what he's going to say. I could tell you what he's going to say next year and the year after. It's the same old thing. Negativity, people are going to die, but is it working? The sad part is, yes, 33% of Americans do not like the tax plan, okay? Why? Well, Democrats and their lemmings in the media have been lying about it for how long now? Ever since they t- they first started talking about it. So for the last four to six months, all we have heard on TV is lies, okay? Lies about children losing health care. Lies about how it's a tax break for the wealthy. It's for Wall Street. It's for corporations. It's going to hurt the middle class. People won't be bringing home more money. It's a great job. i got to give credit where credit is due. Unlike the Democrats, I, Lou Pate, here on the Savage Nation, tell the truth. And it is a great job by the Democrats and the media because people are just constantly being inundated, inundated that the tax cuts are bad. Putting more money in your pocket is a bad thing. How can that be? How can that be? Just before the show, I was talking uh, I was talking with a neighbor of mine, Vermont died in the wool liberal, who he said how much he is going to benefit financially from this new tax law. Yet he is still against it. And that is the mindset of the Democratic Party. I don't get it. More money in your pocket is a bad thing. Now, granted, depending on where you live, it's going to affect you differently. It is not my job here on the Savage Nation to sell it. Okay, What I think really doesn't matter. It has been sold. It is now law. Whether you agree with it or disagree with it depends on where you live in the vast arena that is the Savage Nation. Obviously, people in California, New York, New Jersey, and many of our listeners at WABC, where I once worked in my hometown, to where I used to live in San Diego, California, in Los Angeles, you're not going to like it. You cannot. You can no longer deduct your state and local taxes, so that's going to hurt you. But then other people, Midwest and other states, again, depends on where you are, are going to benefit exponentially. So overall, whether you're super rich, moderately rich, middle class, lower income, everybody's going to benefit a little bit. So again, how is this a bad thing? But my question to you, the listeners of the Savage Nation, With the media spinning it, or you should say the DNC and Schumer and Pelosi spinning it, is this going to hurt or help the GOP? Will their false false descriptions of this tax bill stick? We have Nancy Pelosi running around, I'm not kidding you, talking about uh, comparing the children in America to Tiny Tim. I mean, there's just no end. It's just like I said, no matter what it is, net neutrality, the tax bill, it's always the same talking points. It's, it's going to benefit the rich. It's going to hurt the middle class. Well, listen, Democrats, Chuck Schumer, I know you can hear me on the great WABC. What have you done? What have you guys brought to the table? Nothing. What have you done to benefit the people that you say you care about? You say you care about people from the inner city. You say you care about children. You say you care about the elderly. You say you care about health care and education. But when the time comes for you to actually do something, and you did have 10 years, you have not done a thing. 
And in the last year, when you could have worked with a president who has reached out to you on multiple occasions, what have you done? You've gone to the uh, Oval Office, maybe gotten a free meal out of it, and then the next day you're bad-mouthing him with the same old speech I've heard a million times. Democrats took over the House and they took over the Senate during the Bush administration in November of 2006. They were officially sworn in in January of 2007. By September of 2008, the whole thing had come crashing down. Fannie and Freddie, you remember it, your 401k went down to nothing. The Great Recession had begun. They pinned it on George W. Bush, but it was really a year and nine months of the Democrats controlling the House and the Senate, and they're giving away the store with Fannie and Freddie and a lot more. That's a a summarized version of it. So from 2007 through 2016, you had your opportunity, and you did nothing with it, Chuck Schumer. So put the podium away, dry up the tears, put away the little violin... And get to work. Get to work for the people. Again, and for anybody who's against the tax bill, I want to hear from you as well. Because how is putting money in people's pocket a bad thing? Okay. Evidently, a lot of people think that. 33% do not like the tax plan. Again, an excellent job by the Democrats and the media. So is this, my question to you, is this going to hurt or help the Republicans down the road? Once people start seeing money in their pocket... In February, because that's when they said it's going to happen, will that change people's minds? Down the road, a year and a half from now, April of 2019, when people are filing their taxes, will the money saved be felt and will it have the desired effect that the Republicans are hoping? Or is the media and the Democrats right that this is going to hurt the American people? Only time will tell. Right now, no one knows. It's funny, it was some columnist from the uh, Washington Post, um, you know, what's the Milbank guy? He was going on saying, this is going to uh, not allow the economy to grow, blah, 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 blah. It's going to stop it. The economy is growing. We're at Dow, we're on the cusp of Dow 25,000. The S&P is at 7,000. Are you kidding me? The economy is roaring. We're at 3.3 GDP with four in sight. And I'm not here to pick on former President Obama, but under President Obama, he never had he never touched 3.0 in eight years. Trump has now had 3.0 or better for three months in a row. So that and a lot more your and your uh, opinions as well. 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-SAVAGE. Is this, this tax cut bill going to hurt or help the GOP? Will the... Uh, the strategy, a great strategy by the media and the Democrats, will it stick? We'll get your, we'll get to your calls and your opinions. But first, tis the season for God, faith, and reason. It is Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller. Put it under the, put God under the tree for Christmas. Trust me, you will not be disappointed, and anybody you give this gift to as well will not be disappointed at all. God, faith. And reason. Tis the season here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855 400 Savage, 855 400 7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800 289 2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Now, more of the Savage Nation on Talk Radio 560, KSFO. Welcome back. It's the Savage Nation. Lou Pate sitting in for Dr. Savage. Just two shopping days left before Christmas. Hanukkah is in the rearview mirror. You have a chance to pick up a copy of Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller, God, Faith, and Reason. Put God under the Christmas tree this season. Hey, that's not a bad thing, you know, kind of getting away from, from God and Christmas and all of that. And Dr. Savage brings it all around in his latest New York Times bestseller, God, Faith, and Reason. Tis the season for God, faith, and reason. Need I say more? Welcome back. We have a lot going on. We're going to be getting to your phone calls, 855-400-SAVAGE. Talking about the victory lap that the GOP is doing regarding the tax uh, tax law. I keep saying tax bill, but tax law, but more so 
the strategy being put out by the Democrats and the media, which is the same thing, because a lot of people right now don't favor this. 33%, as I've said, which is a great job by the Dems getting the message out there. People think this is a negative. They keep playing the class warfare, as I said, and people are, are believing it. The talking point that the Republicans have put out there is that when Reagan's tax cut 33 years ago went through, it was 18% in popularity, so that, you know, hoping history repeats itself because that then came back roaring and Reaganomics and all that kind of stuff, and most people were happy. But for those of you, as I mentioned before, in New York, those of you New Jersey, California, and any of the blue states that are high taxed who are going to be not feel the benefits of this, I'm down in South Florida, I'm going to feel the benefits of it, you have to look at, well, you will not be able to deduct your state and local taxes, right? But then you have to ask yourself the question, why are we taxed so high by our state that we then have to deduct our taxes and get get it from the federal government? You have to look in California to Moonbeam up in Sacramento. Here in New York, you have to look at uh, <laughs> Governor Cuomo. <laughs> Got to pay the mob tax going over the Tappan Zee Bridge now, right? I like to joke about that. Many of my friends back home joke about that, the Tappan Zee Bridge. Now it's the Mario Cuomo Bridge. We call it the mob tax paying the toll. It's a joke, everyone. But um, you have to look at you have to look at the leaders of your state and say, you know, not why can't why are we not able to deduct this anymore? You have to say why are we paying so much? And one of the big things in the tax cut that is no one is looking at that it's not being covered because it's a huge victory for the president and the Republicans is the Obamacare mandate gone. I mean, that Obamacare mandate basically made us a dictatorship. Your government forcing you to purchase a product, whether you want it, whether you need it, does not matter. It's very draconian. Forcing you to buy something that you neither maybe want or need, that is now gone. It is the foundation of Obamacare. Obamacare is still there. Um, you know, maybe the president overspoke a little bit by saying it's basically a repeal. It's not. That's a stretch, let's be honest. But it is a step in the right direction. Why should you be penalized if you take the gamble? It's an irresponsible gamble not to have health care, but if it's, a, if it's available to you and if it's affordable, but you can, it's a free country, as we used to say in the old neighborhood. Why you know, why should anybody, especially the government, force you to do anything? And one of my favorite things about it is drilling in the Anwar. I have been saying that, gosh, going on, what, 15 years now that I've been on the air. Why shouldn't we go after our own natural resources? We have more natural resources than most of the world. And yet, through regulations, which Trump has gotten rid of, what, almost a thousand now, uh, there is optimism. And that is what this brings optimism. And that's why Wall Street's doing good, and that's why Main Street will follow. 855-400-SAVAGE. Lou Pate, in with you. Get your copy of God, Faith, and Reason. Only two more days to put God under the Christmas tree here. At- Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. We heard the story, and I wish our Republican friends could have heard it, of Laura Hatcher, mother of sweet and kind 11-year-old Simon, one of the little lobbyists. Simon has a rare disease and, and cerebral palsy. His mother spoke of how their family watches the Muppet version of A Christmas Carol and how Simon sees himself in Tiny Tim, another kind boy with braces on his legs. Unfortunately, this story as of today, does not have the same kind of happy ending as A Christmas Carol. But this story is not over. And like Tiny Tim, Simon and his family now find their future in danger because of the greed of those with power, the cruelty that is in the heart of the tax scam. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate sitting in for Dr. Savage. As we steamroll our way towards Christmas, there are two shopping days left for you to pick up a copy of Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller, God, Faith, and Reason. Put God under the Christmas tree. 
And while you're at it, you can go to michaelsavage.com for all of your headlines, such as the one former Obama aide muses about Pence, Ryan, and McConnell's death. <laughs> amazing. That's Ben Rhodes there for you. But uh, go check out the whole story. Uh, it's pretty amazing. So the uh, tax law, which is you know, being debated as whether it's positive or not, it is going to benefit corporations. There's no doubt about that. But isn't it the corporations who hire people? Well, the Democrats are hoping that the corporations keep the money and don't hire people. They're actually thinking this. They're actually, they actually want this. But let's get to the phones. Let's go to KSFO, Dr. Savage's flagship in San Francisco. Shelby, welcome to the Savage Nation with Lupe. Thank you for holding. Hey, Shelby, I can't hear you. Uh, I said, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Thank you. Sorry about that. How, what's up? What's up? Well, I'm a conservative, which, of course, makes me a minority right here in San Francisco to begin with. But it also makes me a minority in my own party, it would seem, because I just can't get on board with ever taxing a tax. Reagan couldn't get on board with it. And it's never been done since the inception of the income tax back in 1862 or the 1913 tax laws. When you say, what do you mean taxing a tax? Well... When you get rid of the salt deductions or you limit them, you're basically saying at least you're going to tax part of a tax. Oh, okay. But now it's what I said before. You have to look to Sacramento, just slightly to the east of where you are, and say, why are we taxed so high that we have to basically deduct them and be supplemented or subsidized by the federal government? I mean, first, could, it be, could it be that you're taxed too high, Shelby? That, that's a red herring. I, first off, I agree with you. The California taxes are too high. You'll never get an argument, man. No. Okay. We're all right. We're kindred spirits there. I'm here. What I'm going to say, though, I, you know, I, don't, I don't disagree that California taxes are too high. But the bottom line is, first off, California is a net contributor, right? They're not. They don't take more than they get from the federal government. Okay. Is that true? I, I don't know. Okay, it's true. Okay. Um, just like New York and New Jersey, actually, are net contributors. But the bottom line here is that the federal government has chosen to tax a tax. And that, you can't get around it. So any any idea that either side should tax. You're not, it's, you're, because you're not being able to deduct it anymore. And I know this is affecting my family in New York. Believe me, they're uh, they're all Republicans except for my my beautiful niece and smart niece who has gone astray. We'll we'll try to bring her back into the fray down the line. But they're all going to get hit very hard. But they, they it's a mixed bag. They don't all uh, they're not all supporting it. Some are, some aren't. They think they see the greater good in the long run. But to say it's a tax of a tax, I think that that's kind of a stretch because you're not being able to deduct it anymore. Does not mean it's a tax on a tax. Of course it does. That's exactly what it means. If you can't deduct it, it means you're paying taxes on that tax money. It's like a double entendre there. But uh, Shelby, thank you for your call. We'll have to agree to disagree on that one. Uh, let's stay at K. Let's go actually. Uh, let's uh, check out the hometown, the great WABC, where I actually worked for two years. <laughs> Michael at WABC, welcome to the Savage Nation. How are you? I'm good. You're on the Savage Nation now. Where where are you uh, here on this one? You're uh, New Yorker. You probably can't. You kind of get hurt like Shelby, your counterpart in California. Yes, I'm a retired detective with 35 years of service. My property taxes in Nassau County are over 16,000. They're going to be capped at 10,000. Right. A home equity loan interest is not a tax write-off anymore. I raised right. four kids, got kids through college. This is not helping me. So you're against it? I'm against it. Okay, so you I mean, I understand everybody, uh, all politics are local, and everybody's going to vote with their pocketbook, but I know the area well. I have tons of friends and family in Westchester and on Long Island. I know people who are paying twenty, twenty-five thousand $25,000 a year. You have 16000 Michael, on their homes. Again, could the problem be not that you're not able to deduct it anymore, which is a problem. I understand you. That's a legitimate gripe. I'm not saying you're wrong. But could it be that your taxes are too high and Albany, in your case, Sacramento, in Shelby's case, are just irresponsible and frivolously spending your money? Maybe they, maybe they need some fiscal responsibility and lower your taxes. $16,000. I know Nassau County. It's beautiful. Uh, whether you're North Shore, South Shore, it's beautiful. But 16000 is crazy, Michael. Yes. Yes. I mean, so I hope I hope it changes. But anyway. but I mean, for the overall, the overall, I I think it's going to benefit the country overall. I mean, and I'm biased because I'm down here in South Florida, and but, um, I'm going I'm going to benefit from it. But I told a story earlier. My neighbor, 
Snowbird from Vermont, he's going to benefit mightily with his pension and whatnot. And he's still against it, but that's a political decision. That's just, uh, I joke with him that he's uh, not right in the head, although he was a brilliant teacher in his day. But I, I think a lot of it comes to politics and a lot of it comes to pocketbook. Yes, yes. Well, I- and you know, and you want, I got to tell you this, Michael, and uh, this goes out to Shelby too, if he's still listening, is Trump is not losing anything. Congressional seats may suffer, but Trump is not losing anything because California and New York are never going to vote for him or any Republican, you know, in, in, until the, the, the next coming ice age. So kind of, I don't say he's sticking it to you, but sticking it to you, he, it's not like in 2020 he's going to win New York or New Jersey or California. Right. right. So did you ever think about moving, Michael? Well, that's a possibility. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I hate to do it. I mean, New York's a great place. It's my home. But uh, well, it's my, my native home. I don't live there now. But, uh, you know, you got your kids. I'm sure you got your grandkids. you got your buddies, you know, the police. Uh, it's, it's, it's just it's a, not everybody can win is the deal. Well, the weather's better in Florida anyway. <laughs> well, this time of year. Come talk to me in July. All right. We're at the ninth gate of hell. Yeah. Thank you, Michael, and I commend you for your service as a police uh, officer and later as a detective. Do appreciate it. Um, Nancy Pelosi was on the prowl, as was uh, Chuck Schumer. Um, Jim, if we can play clip number six, this is Chuck Schumer again. Occupy Wall Street talk points, cl- talking points, class warfare talking points. Here, uh, clip number six, please. And one place we're really going to focus on is the suburbs. This is a horrible bill for so many suburban people. And they know it. And they know it. And uh, the suburbs are uh, now, well, I think, going to move much bluer because of this tax bill. You mean you hope? You hope. I mean, you have uh, people such as Michael, retired detective, who is going to get hit for about $6,000. His property taxes are 16000 It caps off at 10000 So the Democrats are going to appeal to them. You know, are you, as a Republican in a blue state in your district, going to give up your Republican congressman or woman just because of this bill for a measly $6,000? And I say measly, $6,000 is a lot of money to me, but you know what I mean in the big picture. Think about it. Let's get back to the phones. Uh, back out to, to San Francisco. Kevin, KSFO, welcome to the Savage Nation with Lou Pate. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Uh, long-time listener to the show. Glad to have you on. But I'll tell you, man, I'm really against this uh, inability to duck uh, state taxes. And I think you hit two things I wanted to cover. Uh, when you, you consistently, your response is that you've got to talk to Sacramento. I think this is senators and congressmen from other states attempting to influence how separate states do their taxes and perform their politics, which uh, I, ha- I, ha- I don't like the federal government trying to tell other states what they should or shouldn't do. And I do think that you also hit on something, your comment with stick it to them. This, to me, really does come off as, well, we're just sticking it to the coast. Oh, without a doubt. I'm Kevin. I Listen, I'm a supporter of Trump, but I, I would tell him, right, He's a, I, live, uh, I live about 10 miles and a billion dollars away from Mar-a-Lago. They won't even let me uh, clean the toilets in there. But if I was ever uh, invited, I would go, and I would tell him, listen, I... I it, doesn't surprise me that New York, New Jersey, California, and other places are, you know, get not getting a benefit of this, and they're not going to be able to deduct their state and local taxes anymore. Salt, as it's called on TV, and, it, and quite frankly, the first time I heard this, Kevin, I thought to myself, well, again, he's not losing anything because it's not like they were going to vote for him in 2020. So if you're going to cut your losses. This is what it is. Am I, I'm not saying it's payback, Kevin, but I would not be surprised if that thought process went into it. What do you say? Uh, I, own the, I work in the trades. I work in construction. There is way more Trump supporters and way more conservatives in Northern California than you guys expect. I see Trump stickers all of the time. Most of the guys I work with are Republican and Trump supporters, and they are livid at this. You're talking about small business owners, people who own their own homes, people who are really contributing that are getting shafted uh, for what seems like pettiness. It's it's very frustrating, disconcerting after being told that we're going to work in the deficit and we're going to give tax breaks, and what we're seeing is an increase in the deficit, and most of the guys I know are getting tax increases. 
Well, and I'm not surprised that um, people who are against this, such as yourself and Shelby and Michael on Long Island, across the country from you, um, you guys come into... I worked construction before I got into radio, Kevin, and I even worked in Trump Towers and uh, the president's uh, apartment, 66 through the 68th floor. But so... Police officers, firemen, construction workers, you know, anybody in that realm, everybody's kind of in the same financial bracket, depending on overtime and things like that. And also, I feel the same mindset. And a lot of union people came over from the the moderate union guys who were Democrats came over to the Trump side. And I could understand the anger, Kevin, definitely, because I know a lot of them are my friends, a lot of them are my family. I understand the anger because they're going to be losing, in Michael's case, 6,000. In other people's 10, 15,000. But it comes back to, again, the taxes are too high. We are way overtaxed. Over $2 trillion in taxes was brought in uh, uh, this year. It's go- Every year we break a record the last three years in a row. We're just overtaxed. There needs to be fiscal responsibility in state houses, and there needs to be fiscal responsibility in Washington, D.C., for which there is none. But, uh, Kevin, uh, thanks for your call. Do appreciate it. Uh, just just quickly, let's get uh, Tony in here, uh, Todd in here at KSFO as well. Hey, Todd, how are you? Yeah. You know, um, I, find it, I find it hilarious that the conservative talk radio sphere will wash over the fact that this is just another rewrite of progressive tax code manipulation. The Democrats could have written this themselves, left their hands, fingerprints all over it, handed it to the Republicans, and it would have been no different than than uh, had they done it themselves and taken credit for it. Well, I, I disagree with you on that, Todd, because Chuck Schumer is is complaining that you know the this is a tax break for for the rich, yet. A lot of places, not saying that you're rich or you're not, nor Kevin or Michael or Shelby, uh, but you know, a lot of places, a lot of people in San Francisco and Los Angeles who are going to be hit hard, a lot of people in Manhattan and New York City and the surrounding suburbs, especially Westchester County, where I used to live, are going to be hit hard. Um, a lot of people would say that these people are rich, so he can't have it both ways. You can't say... It's a tax cut for the rich, and then complain that people in New York and California and places like Saddle River, New Jersey, where there's a lot of money, are, are getting hit, that the rich there are getting hit too hard with taxes. It can't be both ways, Todd. I fall, I fall into the rich category. This is way more than, uh, you know, rich versus poor. They only, you know, the, the only, the, the number that they gave out, the GOP themselves, 80% are going to benefit, 5% are going to see an increase. That's progressive tax code manipulationism. Okay, that's that's democratism. And you guys want to keep blaming the mainstream media and the Democrats for the rhetoric. That's the game they play. Forget about them. Well, I'm not I'm not blaming them for the rhetoric. I'm calling them on the fact that they're lying. Well, so is the GOP, because they t- said at the beginning of the year, we're going to simplify this tax code. This isn't simplification. Well, they no, they have simplified. Listen, I'm I'm not trying to sell this to you. I'm just saying they have simplified it. It just in your case didn't come out to your liking. A lot of this, not not I don't know what your politics are, Todd, but a lot of people, it's political. Like I mentioned, my neighbor, he just doesn't like Trump, doesn't like Republicans, even though he's going to make a boondoggle of money on this. He's still against it just because it's coming from Trump. To me, that makes no sense. I, I'll tell you where I stand. I'm a constitutionalist first, and the, the parties can go to hell for all I care. The point is, is that the principle of the okay. matter is we should be talking, this, this GOP about complete repeal and follow through. They should have been talking about a flat tax code and follow well, through. They well, even on the complete, I got to run, Todd, but on the complete repeal, you look at John McCain, petty little man on that one, who voted in a 117% increase on Obamacare premiums uh, with that vote that night just because he didn't like Trump. That is petty. All right, we'll take a quick break. Lou Pate here with you in the home for God, Faith, and Reason. Put Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller under the tree. Put God under the tree this Christmas here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Now back to Michael Savage on Talk Radio 560 KSFO. Ooh. 
Welcome back to the Savage Nation. My name is Lou Pate, sitting in for Dr. Savage. And as we steamroll towards Christmas, it is only two shopping days left for you to pick up a copy of Dr. Savage's latest New York Times bestseller, God, Faith, and Reason. Put God under the Christmas tree this year. You will not be disappointed. 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-SAVAGE. If you're holding, please continue to hold. I want to give everybody plenty of time to get your voice in here. And we're going to continue to take calls on the other side. But we are talking about the tax law. Obviously, I'm not surprised the people listening on the great WABC, the great KSFO on both ends of the country, not happy because you can no longer deduct uh, your income and those the deductions, the SALT deductions, state and local taxes, that is something that is obviously going to hit people hard. But when we come back, we're going to continue to take calls on that and also talk about the U.N. vote today. Tough talk from President Trump and Ambassador Haley. Both of those coming up here on the Savage Nation, the home of God, faith, and reason. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. So, you know, I'm a dog, and I'm kind of new to this family, but I've noticed a trend. My humans do this thing where they go around and get all my toys and hide them in this basket, but it's always, but it's always the same basket. And it's always the same place. And then they act so surprised when I find them. But I'm like, hello? That's where you put it last time. Humans are the worst at hide-and-go-seek. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. <laughs> 